Hello, my name's Anna Wilson and I'm the author of The Wide Wide Sea, which I'm going to talk to you about today. And it's illustrated by the amazing Jenny Lovely, who is also going to be talking to you today about her illustrations. She has made this book the beautiful thing that it is, and I'm absolutely thrilled with how she's illustrated it. So thank you, Jenny. Anyway, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit today about why I've written a book about the sea. It's basically because I love it. I have always loved the sea. I learned to swim in the sea when I was four and we were living in Australia. And there was this amazing swimming pool in the sea that was made of shark nets to stop sharks getting in. And we learned how to swim in the sea. It was much warmer than it is in the, in the UK, of course. But then I went back to live in England and I lived in Kent, very near the seaside. And we used to go to the sea a lot. And my dad said he remembered having to get me to come in because he said I was turning blue with cold. But I loved it so much I wouldn't stop. And I'm still the same today. So basically I swim all year round and I don't wear a wetsuit. I love being in the sea, just in my swimming costume. I have little gloves to keep my hands warm and um, swimming shoes as well, just to keep my feet warm. But otherwise I'm just in a swimming costume and I love it. I love it when the sea is dark and sort of mysterious and I love it when it's clear and beautiful and blue and green and I love all the animals that live in the sea and it just makes me feel so free. So basically I wanted to write a book about that. I thought I'll write a book about swimming and I thought that's not that's not particularly interesting. I need a story to go with it and um, writers are like this. We're always looking for a story. So normally what I'll do is when I'm out and about, if I notice something interesting or exciting, when I get back, I start writing about it in my diary and I just keep notes. So it's a really good idea if you want to be a writer to keep a notebook because then you can note down anything that you like during the day or on holiday and it might give you ideas for stories later on. Now, lots of funny things have happened to me when I've been swimming. One of the best things was when my children were small, we went to swim early in the morning and some dolphins went swimming across the bay. And as we swam out into the sea, the dolphins came towards us into the shallow water and they were jumping out of the sea and twisting and turning and making squeaky noises. And the more we laughed and clapped, the more they did it. It was like they were sort of performing for us and really enjoying showing off in the water. That was a pretty magic day. And last winter we saw um, humpback whales in the bay as well with their spouts of water coming out the top of their heads. And my son's seen basking sharks down here in Cornwall as well. Um, but one of the most exciting things that happened to me very recently, which gave me the idea for the book, was that I was swimming on my own one morning. It was very safe and very still. because I only ever swim when it's safe. And um, my dog had come down to the beach with me. And I was swimming along and I suddenly heard this big sort of snorting noise behind me. And I thought, well, maybe my dog's jumped in behind me because she sometimes likes to get in the water. And I turned around and no, it wasn't my dog. It was a seal. A bit bigger than this one. <laughs> Lovely little seal. And he was sort of right behind me, almost on my toes. Now, he was quite big, so I thought I don't really want him to get too close. So I swam to a nearby rock to get out and I had to look at him and he stopped below the rock and he stared at me and I stared at him. And I thought, I wonder what he would say if he could talk. Perhaps he was chasing me because he didn't want me to be in the sea because it's his home. Or perhaps he was trying to catch up with me to play. Or perhaps he wanted to ask me politely to be very well behaved in the sea because it's his home. So this is what writers do. We sort of ask each other questions and that's how stories get started. Anyway, I rushed home and I thought I'm going to find out as much as I can about seals because I love learning new things and new facts. And at the time, actually, I was writing this book, Nature Month by Month. And there's a new one coming out for 2022 as well. Now, Nature Month by Month is an almanac. An almanac is a bit like a diary or a calendar, except that all the pages are filled in for you. And there are lots of tips and hints of things that you can do all year round um, inspired by nature. So um, one of the things I thought I would write about was seals. So I went away to find some facts about them and I wrote this page here. Um, these illustrations are done by Ellie Yance, who also lives in Cornwall, not far from me. And um, she's made this a very, very beautiful book. So what I found out was that there are two types of seal that we find in this country, um, the grey seal and the common seal. And the grey seal tends to live around where I do um, in rocky areas and um, Cornwall has a very rocky coastline. So grey seals like, like to live there. The grey seal grows to a much larger size than the common seal and the males are bigger than the females. And I think it was a male that was chasing me the other um, 
of the one that I was telling you about. And the grey seal has a much longer nose or snout than the common seal. I also discovered that the Greek name for them is um, translates into English as a hook-nosed sea pig, which seems quite a rude way to describe a seal. Um, but they do have bigger seal, big, bigger noses than the common seals, so that's probably why. Anyway, I really enjoyed finding out about seals, and I thought I'm going to find out a bit more. Um, so even after I'd written this book, I, st I was learning more things about seals. And I discovered how amazing they are at swimming. And the reason why, when I went into the sea, I couldn't see a seal, but then suddenly there was one chasing me. The reason why is because they can swim so fast and they can dive so deep that one minute there isn't a seal and the next minute there it is and you don't have any warning and that's what's so exciting. So the way they do this is unlike humans, when, you know, when we go underwater, we have to hold our breath, don't we? <gasps> and dive down and we probably can't do it for more than about a minute. Seals breathe all the air out of their lungs first. So they go, <sighs> breathe it all out, and then they dive down and they can dive for 70 metres deep, which is so deep, and they can go really fast as well. And they can stay underwater holding their breath for 15 minutes. So they can swim a long, long way in 15 minutes. So yeah, one day you can be swimming along thinking there's nothing in the sea with me apart from a few fish. And the next minute there's a seal. So that's how exciting I, I just I find them so exciting because they're so clever and so much better at swimming than, than I am. <laughs> anyway, I thought I would like to write a storybook about seals, which is what this book is really. Um, but I couldn't think of sort of how to connect the story. So I, I knew I wanted to write a bit about swimming and how much I love the sea. And I knew I wanted to write about meeting a seal. But I couldn't quite sort of work out how to join it up. And then one day I was walking on the beach and it was covered in litter. And I thought, you know, what? I need to put that into a story, actually, because I need to sort of spread the word that, you know, dropping litter is not is not good. And plastic pollution is terrible. It's bad for the ocean. It's bad for the animals in the ocean. And it's bad for us. And I get really upset when I see litter. I, sit, I get upset when I see it anywhere, but particularly on the beach. So I thought, well, how can I put that into a story without it sort of being boring or me sort of saying mm, we must pick up your litter? So I thought back to a time in Cornwall when we'd had a massive storm. And the next day, the beach was covered in plastic. And I thought, that's what I need. I need a big dramatic scene in my story. So that's what I've done. So in this story, there's um, a child there who goes to visit their grandparent. And they love the beach. And um, Jenny's done some beautiful illustrations that actually look very much like the beach where, where I am in Cornwall. So you've got lovely sand dunes and sand there. And then um, on some of the other pages, you'll see there are sort of, sort of rocky cliffs as well. So the child goes to stay with the, the grandparent and they run down to the beach and um, it's the best place in the world. They love it and they, they count all the birds and they collect seashells and bits of lovely sea glass and everything. And then they spot a seal. Can you see the seal? They get really excited and they say to the grandmother, oh, what's the seal doing there? And the, and the grandmother says, oh, it's his home. You, you have just put your foot in his home. The water is the seal's home. And the child doesn't really understand this, but the child starts to think, oh, what would it be like if I could meet the seal and actually swim with it? And in the child's imagination, they turn into a seal. And in their imagination, they're swimming through the sea, meeting the other seal and playing, swimming in an underwater wonderland of anemones and crabs and tiny snails and sea squirts and starfish and sea squirts. Lots of strange animals under the sea. I'm trying to read that backwards, which is why I got one of those words wrong. Sorry about that. So in their imagination, they turn into a seal and they play with the seal. And it's lovely and they have a beautiful day and they collect lots of shells and the weather's perfect. And lovely seabirds, all the lovely seabirds that they see. And then a storm comes in because that's what happens. It can happen really quickly down here in Cornwall. One minute the sun's shining, the next minute it's a stormy, stormy day. And they go home and there's a thunderstorm. Can you see the sky cracks white with lightning spears? And they go to bed that night and they have a very restless night because the storm, you know, gives them sort of dreams. And they dream that their bed turns into the sea and they dive down and they meet the seal and they have a lovely playtime session together. And when the child wakes up, they see that the storm has made everything wild and broken and messy completely ruined the beach it's covered in plastic bags and horrible bits of rubbish and they get really cross and upset and said who did this 
And the grandma says, well, we did it. People did it. The child says, this isn't my mess. And the granny says, don't worry, we can do our bit. We can pick it up. If we pick it up, we'll make the place better. And they do that. And lots and lots of people come down to help them. And they do a beach clean. And that's what's so wonderful is that you can actually do this. You can get involved in a beach clean. You can either do it on your own well, with a grown up, pick up litter and put it away. Or you can get involved in a local beach clean and make the beach and the sea all clean again. And if you do, the seal will be very thankful. So that is the basic idea of my story, The Wide Wide Sea. I hope you enjoy it.